All right, so today is warm. It's been warm the last couple of days, so they're out, they're active. Obviously, I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt, you know, it's been nice and balmy, but previously it was very cold. And, and next cold. week, it's again. in the 30s again, yeah. It's getting cold again. Horrible. So, um, <laughs> so that brought a lot of questions about, you know, like, well, do they just spend all their time underwater in the cold? And do they sleep when it's cold like that, you know, to pass the time or something like that? And so, um, well, two different things here. Uh, for one, when it gets really cold, yes, that is what they do. Uh, they're just going to go either underwater and wait out the cold. Depends how cold it's going to get, okay? Like, if it is chilly and rainy and windy, what they're going to do, come up, get a breath, go down, and just stay on the bottom. And then wait, and then come up, get a breath several hours later, and just do it on repeat and wait out the bad weather. So they can hold their breath again for six hours at a time, guys. So that's where they're going to do that, where they're going to go down and just stay down there and hang out underwater for hours at a time and then surface, get a breath, and just do it on repeat. And that's how they're going to pass the time when you have bad weather like that. But when it gets really cold, it's a different tactic. So when it gets down in like the 30s, that's when you may have seen in some of my videos of Big Mac where he actually positions his nose higher in the water than what they normally do. And he has his membranes up even though his face is not under the water. So what he's doing is prepping for it to freeze. This is a really cool behavior I've never seen before because I've always worked in South Florida. All my experience with gators has been down south. So now that we're up here where it gets really cool, that's my first time seeing that behavior. It's been fascinating to watch. He's also the only one that does it. I think he is just, uh, what do you want to say, like more sensitive? You know, uh, she hasn't cared at all. Maybe she's aware. She's like, hey, you dummy. It's not that cold. It's not going to freeze. The water is not that cool. <laughs> like, so maybe he's more sensitive or maybe he's um, just kind of uh, off on his, um, what do you want to say, like his metering on how cold it is. His temperature gauge is a little, you know, a little too cold uh, because she hasn't done any of that behavior yet or the other ones, the other alligators too. Uh, but he's totally prepping for cold and it's really fascinating. Uh, so again, what he'll do is he'll lift his head a little bit higher than normal and then he'll have his eyes above the water but the membranes up and that way when it freezes the ice doesn't damage his eyes and he can have his nose above the ice well above the ice because once it starts to freeze and he moves around a little bit you can have a little bit of raising of the ice you know around a moving object so he's trying to get his nostrils well above that ice line so i think that is so cool that he will do that um but again he's doing it like too early it's i mean it hasn't froze here. We've had a little bit of frost, but it's not enough to freeze over the water at all. Uh, so I think that if it was cold enough to freeze, our water is not going to freeze anyways because we keep the water running. So that wouldn't happen in here either way. But it's not like our lake is freezing or anything like that either. But if it did, I would expect the same behavior from her and from Dino. It's just he seems to be a kind of an early warning on that one. You know, it's kind of cool and interesting. Um, but yeah, so that's what they're going to do in the cold. But so then are they sleeping during that? Or, and then generally speaking, where do they sleep? Do they sleep underwater? Do they sleep on land? I get these questions a lot. And the answer is, they don't sleep. It's crazy, they don't sleep, or at least not like you do. They do what's called unihemispheric sleeping, where half the brain goes to sleep at a time. And so they're actually always aware and always conscious. It's really cool. So dolphins do the same thing too, where half the brain will sleep at a time. So they're always awake, always aware. I wish I could do that. You know, I get so much more done. You know, it'd be really cool. But yeah, so they're never like fully asleep like what you are. You'll see them during the day where they're just kind of sitting there and they're just kind of like, like you'll, you'll see their eyes like close for a second and then open back up. They look around and they kind of like half close them and then they look around and like, I, I would assume that's when they're sleeping. And they're, they're, you could tell they're, they're totally still aware and awake, but they're, they're also kind of like, eh, like dozing a little bit, you know? But so again, they never fully go to sleep like what you do. Now, that is a really cool adaptation because they're also a conscious breather. They have to be, uh, they, they choose to breathe. They don't naturally just breathe like what you do. You are, if you go unconscious, you continue to breathe on your own. So like whether you are sedated or knocked unconscious, you will continue to automatically breathe and keep yourself alive, which makes sense because you live on land, except when we're in the water. Um, so I like free diving a lot and I go free diving and I really enjoy it. I can hold my breath for five minutes at a time. I can go down a hundred feet on one breath and it's really, really cool. One of the big fears in free diving is shallow water blackout. And that's where you lose consciousness because you're holding your breath for so long. Um, or you don't have, you, well, basically you don't have enough oxygen in your system. That can be a, even on a short breath hold if you just didn't prepare properly. But either way, you lose consciousness and because 
we are humans that unconsciously breathe. As soon as you lose consciousness, you stop holding your breath and you start automatically breathing and then drown yourself. And so there's a lot of free divers that die. A lot of spear fishermen die like that because they, they black out and start breathing automatically underwater and they die. So that is not a good thing for humans. But for alligators, that's not a problem. They won't do that. So if he is fighting another alligator and they are just going at it and he gets knocked unconscious and in the water, he doesn't automatically breathe. And then when he regains consciousness, he's like, okay, go to the surface and breathe. And so he won't die from that. You know, so that's a really, really cool adaptation that they have. Um, now, that can also help them through other times of, uh, you know, again, inclement weather, all that kind of stuff. Like, it, I think it's a really, really fascinating adaptation, but it just comes back to the idea that they, they don't sleep like we do. You know, they do that unihemispheric sleeping, which I think is so fascinating. Um, also, I think is an interesting thing is when I, while I was researching that topic, well, first, back up, I never read about this. Um, through like all of my early years working with alligators. I worked with alligators for years without knowing this. And uh, because it's not really commonly displayed information among crocodilia stuff. And I would have all like more, like more basic books, all kinds of books about alligators, crocodiles, none of them said anything about that. And then I'm working with them and um, this is when I was doing research too. So I'd be with the alligators all day at the tourist park working with them and they're obviously awake all day. And then I would go at night and catch alligators at night for research and I'm like, wait, they're, they're awake all night too. And then I'm like, wait a minute. They're awake all day, they're awake all night. When are these things sleeping? And that's what really got me into it. And then I started to do more research and then I found in academic papers where they actually do talk about it and the unihemispheric uni sleeping thing. So that's how I actually learned about it. What are you pointing at? The dogs. What are they doing? Doing what you think they're doing in that same spot. Rolling it. Hey, Ocala. There's a spot back there. Where Come here. We're, we're, we have like Ocala, Clover. We've got um. It's that same spot. I don't know if it's an owl or uh, a hawk, but there's a bird of prey that sits on a specific branch right there and likes to eat snakes that it catches out of our natural pond and then drop the remains, and then they go and roll in the dead snake remains. And, this and it's is like, happened so many times. It's a repeat problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. So every time they go back to that spot, I, I know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so while I was researching this topic, and I, I, I read more about it with dolphins as well, they show that a lot of dolphins will do their sleeping, their half sleep during training with the trainers. They're so bored of it and they're like this is so easy and dumb this is a good time for me to sleep because i don't need full brain function to do this so i thought that was pretty interesting you know um but uh, but yeah as far as these guys go it does seem like when they're just kind of lounging around that's when they kind of go into their half sleep cycle kind of thing um but yeah how does that affect their their brain lacking uh like rem sleep or do they dream do they daydream i have no idea that's all really interesting cool stuff that i wonder about you know um, but anything else you want to add on the on that one? Mm -hmm. No. All right. Well, let us know in the comments what you think, guys. Thanks for watching.